On that note, we're going to turn to our State of the U.S. story tonight. The results are in for polls conducted after the first round of Democrat debates. And these polls show former Vice President Joe Biden losing support and Senator Kamala Harris on the rise. In perhaps the most talked about moment from their debate, Senator Harris called out Biden for his opposition to forced busing in the 1970s. In doing so, she may have successfully labeled Biden as insufficiently woke for the modern Democratic Party. A new CNN poll shows Biden down 10 points after this at 22 percent, with Harris up nine points to 17 percent, Elizabeth Warren up eight points to 15 percent, and Bernie Sanders down four points to 14 percent. The question tonight, is this just a post-debate blip that Biden will bounce back from, or is this the beginning of the end for his presidential campaign? With me now, former digital director for Mitt Romney for president, Justin Hart. Justin, good to see you. Liz, good to be with you. All right, Justin, this is a very interesting poll from CNN. Biden 22, Harris 17, Warren 15, Sanders 14. Is this the new reality or is this poll an anomaly? Well, I feel like history is repeating itself. I joined the Romney campaign in August of 2012. When that campaign ended and I didn't have a new boss who was a president, we had to do some self-reflection. One of those questions that constantly came to us was, what would you have done differently? My colleague had a great answer to that, which was, we would have run as an incumbent. Uh, on self-reflection also, we had to make the determination that the Romney campaign walked on eggshells around the press, around the Democrats. We were too cautious. This time around, it's 2020, and President Trump suffers from neither of those handicaps. He is the incumbent, which carries some weight, and no one could ever accuse President Trump of walking on eggshells. I think he proudly and loudly stomps them into the carpet, if you will. Is, so, that, is that why Harris has gained nine points, you think, because she wasn't walking on eggshells around Joe Biden? Because she was very ruthless, actually, in her attack, very direct, very... She was... That was actually probably one of the only real attacks between the candidates in either of those or in the combination of the two nights. Do you think that's why she uh, gained so much traction in the polls? Absolutely. She came across as authentic. She took a stab at the establishment candidate. The parallel goes back to June 2011 when Governor Governor Romney took place in his first debate. This time it was Michelle Bachman who presented herself, acquitted herself very well, took a few swipes at Romney, and saw herself in that same Quinnipiniac poll early July 2011 eat into Romney's lead. His lead dropped a little bit, but warning to Harris, you can peak too early. Within a month, Bachman was back to single digits. And we see those parallels play out again and again. Biden is Romney, Sanders is Ron Paul, Elizabeth Warren is perhaps Newt Gingrich, uh, maybe uh, Kamala Harris is actually someone like Rick Santorum. And each one of these could peak too early, could take a stab at the establishment candidate. It will be really interesting. In 2008, Obama handed us our hats as the GOP, and it gave birth to the Tea Party movement, if you remember. We had a spectacular midterm in 2010. We see the same thing taking place here. 2016, Trump hands the hats to the Democrats. The resist movement comes across. They have a good, not spectacular, but a good midterm. Can they carry that forward, or will they, too, choose an establishment candidate like Biden and see their lot walking on eggshells only to the ruin and Trump goes on to a second term. It's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting theory to compare Biden to Romney and say when you're a cautious establishment candidate, this is, you know, how to play it wrong like Romney did. And you're saying Biden is vulnerable to repeating those same political mistakes, even if the ideology is very different. I think it's an interesting uh, theory. There are two more polls out uh, from the Hill and from Politico that do not reflect what the CNN poll and what the Quinnipiac poll uh, say, which is that Biden dropped and Harris jumped. These two other polls from The Hill and from Politico show Biden losing just a bit, you know, 33, he's at 33%, he's lost two points. Uh, in The Hill poll in Politico, he's lost five points down to 33%. Which do you think is accurate? These are painting two very different pictures, telling two very different stories uh, of how, basically how Joe Biden did in maintaining his lead. Well, the details are always in the crosstabs. We see that moderate Democrats 
tend to go towards Joe Biden, and leftist liberal Democrats swing way towards the Warren Sanders part of this thing. Curiously, uh, Kamala Harris actually has support across a broad stratagem of different demographics, age, race, uh, their tendencies towards their political ideology. And so it'll be interesting if she can take that same base and build on it. Uh, but right now, it's pretty predictable where things are coming up, but it's way too early to make a prediction on things. Although I will make this thing. I think Tulsi Gabbard may be their VP nominee, no matter who gets the nomination. Oh, interesting, interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. And see, one last question here. There was a poll from David Binder Research. This is not a national poll. This is just an Iowa poll. As you know, the candidates compete in the Iowa caucuses. First, in this poll, it shows the Democratic primary. It shows Warren at 20 with an increase. She's jumped 12 points. Harris at 18, an increase of 9 points. Biden at 17, a decrease. He's lost 8 points. Bernie at 12, he has lost 5 points. What do you make of that? I've sat down with great Iowan voters, and one of the things they tell you is they will look over your policies with a tooth comb. And the person who has the most mature stand policy and delegate of there in Iowa is Elizabeth Warren. She does very well in articulating what she would do, and that's a stark contrast to her other peers, uh, like Beto, who has very, very, very few policies that are out there. And so I think that's what you're seeing is the matureness of that thing, perhaps again a parallel to Newt Gingrich, who had points and plans and stratagem from day one. Very articulate on policy. Can they take it to the end? I don't know. Oh, interesting. And that's very interesting, too, because it's less of a judgment on ideology and more of a judgment on preparation uh, is what I'm hearing you're saying. That's very interesting. Justin, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Happy Fourth of July, Liz. Happy Independence Day to you, too. Up next, the California State Assembly approves a bill 